Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I'm here with the Chicago event and I'm on the last few races. I've just finished race 60, which is a uh, relay that's not too difficult. And here, usually starting at race 62 or 3, uh, things start to get more challenging. And we know that race 69 is pretty tough. So the way this event is structured, much like any of these events that are sort of paid um, events in my opinion the goal of the event is to get you as a player as far in as possible and then at some point put a hurdle that's pretty difficult in front of you but close enough to the end so that the prize is in sight therefore you're more likely to want to just spend something and get yourself through and this event like the supercar science type events like the other american road trip events if you want the prize car, you either have to be real lucky or you're going to have to get some crates. Now, I've been pretty patient. I waited to get this Dodge Mopar pretty much maxed out. Uh, this one is not so bad because the Dodge Mopar, you can use the Gold Star, some petal crates and bronze keys to max it out. A little bit of gold maybe to transfer stuff if it came to it. Um, I actually found it easier to use the crates to get the stage sixes because I had the Dodge Fusions. But regardless, that car is much more easily completed. The real difficult car here is the ZL1, uh, NASCAR Next Gen. First thing, this car is not very good. Uh, it's a 10 second car, stage five only, even as you build it with Fusions. And even after you get stage sixes, it doesn't matter. Another thing, and this is worth mentioning, it's showing me nitrous every time uh, I hit a stage six. And I already found out when I went back the first time that in fact I got engine, not nitrous. And I suspect this is happening throughout this event. Uh, people are getting a stage six that shows one thing, but you're not getting the stage six you think uh, was given to you. So you have to check your inventory. Since getting the engine, I decided to go ahead and go through the rest, and I was able to get body and turbo um, out of the crates, and therefore, my car's already ready. I know from doing another video on this event that engine, body, and turbo as the three stage sixes will allow me to get through the entire event without further upgrading the ZL1, and that's exactly what you see before you. Uh, but in order to make the event easier for myself, I did use maxed out versions of pretty much every other car uh, in the event. This is why the relays are very simple for me because the cars are fully built, they're very fast, and they make short work of the relays. And as far as challenges are concerned, with all these other cars, including even the Cadillac here, and I use the Cadillac because our season car is a Cadillac and it doesn't hurt to get some extra fusions. And this is one of the strategies I use every time um, I do an event, I try to plan ahead. Uh, if I think Cadillacs may be something that will get introduced in the future, I try to use a Cadillac. I get those extra fusions because that's one less fusion you have to worry about when the time comes. The GT500 here, again, the Shelby GT500 is maxed. Um, I'm utilizing basically tunes from Zucar and shift patterns from Zucar. Uh, he has some great videos on this kind of stuff. Makes life so much easier than having to figure it out on your own. And that's the beauty of YouTube resources. Just You can use other people's resources, figure out what you need to do, and then just do it. Right? It's a game. In the end, all of us are here to have fun, uh, not to bang our head against a wall over a game and get frustrated and waste effort that really was supposed to be relaxation and enjoyment. Now, speaking of that, these events are not always going to be relaxation or enjoyment because, again, they are set up and designed to help natural motion make some money. So as long as you understand that, and as long as you're not someone who absolutely must finish every event in the game anytime you see it, you should be fine to play this event the way you want to. Yes, the six second, um, they call it a sick one second Camaro or something like that. That one is supposed to be an awesome car that's going to be super fast, etc., etc. But like any prize car, like anything that's been in the game in the past six years, in order for the game maker to kind of lure you or guide you towards the next greatest thing, 
they're going to have to upstage that car at some point with the next big event. So I don't care how great the car seems on paper or how it looks on other YouTube videos. In the end, you'll use it for a while and move on. None of these prize cars are ever going to be used forever and ever, except, you know, some people like a particular car, they use it a lot. But realistically, free play, you should work on Legends, get the F1, and the F1 will do everything you need it to do in the game, period. Of course, the downside of doing it that way is once you have a few cars and you can just make RP, you're just basically collecting milestone cars and the game can get boring because you feel like you're always locked out of events like this. So it, it's always going to be a balancing act between do I spend or do I focus on playing for free and don't worry about making through these events. So free to play players as as long as long as you have played as much resources as you have oftentimes with events like this you will get stuck somewhere where you can't proceed uh, especially if you're not going to pull crates for cash getting those stage sixes relies on luck of the draw and if lady luck's not on your side you're basically done okay now all that discussion aside let's go back to talking about the event here as you can see the races so far are still in the 10 second range for opponents which means these guys are not even really fast i mean a stage five one stage six will generally get you this far as far as the base challenges are concerned of course uh speed traps can be difficult for cars without the right stage sixes and the hurdle races which are coming up they're going to be difficult the real hurdles are not these relays. I mean, yeah, they're a little bit challenging to a point, but uh, a three-second margin within these two cars means you can run one at stage five only and the other one with maybe three stage sixes and you're fine. So you have a lot to play with as far as that's concerned. So none of those are really challenging. Even up to this point, I'm at probably race, you know, four or five races from the end. I haven't seen really a challenge that would absolutely stop me in my tracks if I didn't have fully max cars. So that's in a way a good thing because at least you can get this far if you had the cars, if you had them upgraded. Even if they're not fully upgraded, you can get pretty far. But to get to the quote prize, which is coming right up, uh, that's going to be a little more difficult. Notice we're down to 8.2 now for the opponent. A few races ago it was tens. Now it's 8.2, so that's quite a jump for the uh, Mopar. And that's where that Mopar won't cut it without some upgrades. But then again, if you got this purple star one, your gold star one would have been more than upgraded for 8.2s. So even if you were to just spend gold and transfer parts, you should still have a very well built uh, purple star. It does burn up resources. And that's again what it all goes back to. One is the game burns up your resources, and two, you may not be able to get the parts you need without real expenditures. So here we go. So 9.6 for this race, right? This is race 68. And 9.6 is one stage six. Well, not a bad one, but a decent stage six on the ZL1 would get you there. The problem comes in right here. And this is where most people, if you're stuck, this is where you're going to be stuck unless you just didn't have some of these cars. But if you got this far, this is where you get stuck because this race jumps from a 9.6 opponent down to like an 8.2 opponent or 8.1 opponent, depending on which one you get. I think I got one of the slower guys because I didn't drive that well and I'm still able to beat them. Um, 8.1 on 5, not the slowest. I think there is an 8.2 guy out there, but most of them are 8.15, 1.6, 1 1.7 opponents. And this was one of the slower guys. But with the three stage sixes I installed, knowing what I know, I was able to get through that. Once you get past that, the relay should be really no issue. They're probably going to average each of these opponents at about, oh, I would say like eight second, nine second runs, if not slower. So you figure five of them should be somewhere between 45 to 50 second total. Um, my guys are all running the best they can because four of them are maxed so you're talking seven second run so i should have a huge lead uh by the end the only car that doesn't look like it's going to get a lead would be this tier four 
But again, uh, you'll see in a second, and I'm sure of it, by the second or third card, this will all be reversed. Uh, I would have a huge lead, and they will be the ones behind. Uh, here we go, T3. So they slipped the T3 car in there for the second guy, and I have a T5, and it's fully maxed. Guess what? I'm going to trash them. Okay, there's just no way that Mustang's going to do much against me because my GT500 is going to run somewhere around 7.7, 7.6s, even with bad shifting and not hitting nitrous correctly. So here we go. Look at that margin now. So I just reversed and put multiple, multiple car lanes, if you're talking about car lanes, but literally I'm beating this guy by like five seconds. That five seconds leads into the next race, so my next car gets a five second head start and so on and so forth. So the lead should only build unless their cars are so much faster they actually take some of that lead back, which just isn't going to happen because this Venom is very quick and boom. Barely, the other car barely started. I'm already at the finish line. And this is going to keep rolling into the next race until each each time the car gets better and better. Um, <clears throat> this helps me out because my last car is going to be a little bit on the slower side. But I will be so far ahead that it doesn't really matter. So that's where the relay plays out. If you have a few max cars in there, by the time you get to the last few cars, even if it's not fully maxed, even if it's missing a lot of parts, it doesn't really matter. You're st you have such a head start that the opponent just couldn't catch up. So here it is, final race of the Chicago event. And I believe coming up from here, we're going to have a New York event. And that's going to lead us to probably the final prize. Um, I think some people are already putting videos out about that. So you should look into it. Get yourself an idea what you need for lock-ins. But I do know, and I know this from experience with the past American events that each of the prize cars will be one of the lock-ins with maybe some alternatives that are paid cars so you're going to need the tua terror striker and you're going to need to build it uh to go ahead and have a chance at getting the final prize all right so that's it um not that bad race 61 to 70 okay uh, as, again without race 69 being a challenge really there was nothing here that was anything to write home about and complain about. They're just not that tough. But it only takes one crazy um, challenge to kind of get you stuck and make all your, quote, prior efforts feel like you were wasting them. All right. So this is a Tua Terra Striker. This is supposed to be a very fast car. Um, <coughs> is it going to be the new quickest car? No. Uh, but is it, one of, is it like the Venom F5? Is it up there in performance? Absolutely. Uh, is it going to be a great live racer? Is it low PP, high EVO? We'll find out. I'll probably build this and then um, use uh, Nitro CSR's account to do a review on it. Regardless, uh, very cool looking car. And with that, we have now completed Chicago. And I believe up to this point, I was able to get every one of the prize cars. So I'm looking pretty good for moving forward. Uh, for the final leg of the American road trip. And we'll discuss that when that becomes available to us. So I hope you liked the video. And um, I do have a video on the ZL1 and the various stage 6 effects of it uh, for that car. Check that out if you're still struggling to try to figure out how many stage 6s you may need to make it through. I can tell you generally you need 4. And in some cases, uh, like what I just did, you only need 3 if you have body, engine, and turbo. All right, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you like my channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, get notifications when I put up new videos. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.